Hello, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining us at uh, Google Talks today. Uh, today, we have a special, special guest. Um, the main man, the guy himself, uh, is joining us for the first time. And um, I just wanted to, you know, identify, highlight, uh, at least for the most part, that um, this was uh, something in the works for a long, long time. And uh, it's an absolute pleasure of mine to introduce to you the entrepreneur, the rapper, the entertainer, the artist, the uh, businessman, the CEO, uh, Mr. Jude M.I. Abaga, who is now yes, known. Sir. <laughs> yes, sir. See champagne all over Google. All over Google. People are like, Cheering, crying at their desk. <laughs> I know that people man, are, thank I you, can man. hear them. They're running through the hallways right now. Bro, <laughs> everybody relax. Every, I'm here for uh, no, but I mean, uh, first of all, thank you, Paul, for, for making this happen. This, like, people are gonna think that this was the plan, like, right after my album came out, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then we had this, but we've been trying to make this happen for a while. You've just been consistent and been a rock. I appreciate it because. I, as I told you, this is a huge opportunity, and you know I, I'm really excited to talk at such a cool, cool place. You know, no, appreciate cool, it, cool man. And, and just to give you some background, I, I mean, Google is a massive company, obviously, uh, with uh, close to between our extended workforce and 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 just the employees, almost half a million people employed globally, and 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 to have the massive rich in in Asia, in Africa, in 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 Europe in Latam everywhere it's just it's just incredible and and um, the pun was in intended right incredible I, 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 yeah. I, I, I love it love it love it love it <laughs> Bars, but, Bars. Bars. resident <laughs> resident MC at Google I love it <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's it's great to be able to reach all those people and and as you know our people in Africa were everywhere and and so they're connected from all those locations uh, listening to you right now so. Uh, without without much ado, we're going to get into it, uh, and I'll start with with the name. As we can see, you have Jude, um, which 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 is I assume the one on the birth certificate. We have yes. Mi, which is the name we've always known, and then all of a sudden, over a month and a half ago, I got this memo that said my last performance as Mi, and I'm like, here we go. What's going to happen to that name, <laughs> that brand yeah, that we've always known? And I failed at it, man. My fans were like, no. <laughs> we're going to call you MI. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was one of those. But let's yeah. hear about the guy. What, 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 what brought that about? What was the inspiration behind the, the rebranding, uh, yeah. recoronation, whatever you want to call it, uh, from MI to the guy? Or, or, or the tribe, as you called it, and filled at this point. Yeah. Uh, rebranding to the guy. Uh, I wanted... I wanted um, some of when you get towards an album release, it becomes yeah. about so many other things, right? About, about your schedule, promotions, streaming numbers, etc. But I wanted to remember in this moment why I started recording this project. And um, I was probably 15 kg larger than I, I, I am now, um, three years, four years ago. And I was like, Honestly, I was saying to myself, do I have anything left in the tank? Like, this is, African music is blowing up. I've done the thing, and now the music game has changed. And it's almost as if, as you, we went from, like, uh, sort of like the bootleg Alaba infrastructure in Nigeria, went towards streaming. Like, there's a whole generation of artists that are being erased, mm. you know, and all the work that they've done. And so I'm sitting there, I'm like, man, I, but I, I still want to make music. It doesn't seem like it's our time anymore. And one of the things that just quietly made me insecure was like, I hated, I hated um, styling sessions. I hated videos, you're taking pictures because I'm a shorter guy. As a bigger guy, clothes just wouldn't fit. So I gave myself a goal that I would cut down. Mm. And I did it by running for like six months every day. I'd wake up and run an hour. And I remember when I got to the weight I was, I was, uh, I hit, I'd, I'd seen all these memes of people that would be like, six months later, the story, you know, they post, and I was like, wow, I'm the guy that, I'm the guy that did it as well, you know? Um, and I wanted to remember that because as you get older, you attempt fewer and fewer things. Yeah. And so you have, you, 
you you spend more time between that feeling of I achieved something new. I did. I set a goal and I I got to it. And it was a big goal, something that I really wanted to do that has helped me even in this moment as I, you know, present my art to the world again. And I did it. And I want people to ask me about it so I can tell them, hey, I did something that was really hard by taking it a day at a time. That's what the album is about. It's about all of us remembering, you know, that we should never give up on our dreams because you are the guy, the girl, the person, the, you know, however you identify, you are the person that could achieve this dream in your life. You know, that, that's, that's massively incredible to, to, to hear that from you. Um, yeah. Someone who we all picture as from the outset, arguably the, the, the goat out of Africa in the rap game and um, go toe to toe with anybody who, who says yeah. different. And to have that self-doubt um, is, is, is really humbling um, to, yeah. to kind of hear. And, and, and it, it's something that we don't necessarily, like working at Google, there's a thing that comes out from everyone where they say you have this imposter syndrome. You come in here, you don't think you're as smart because it's just it's just one of those big things. But to hear you come out and say, even you at the top, that we all look at as being at the top, going through that, um, what, what's your advice to people sort of navigating that same um, emotion right now of, of not feeling like they can do it, of not feeling like they belong, of not feeling like um, they're, they're, they're as great as they really are? How do they tap yeah. into that? Oh, man, that's that, that last couple sentences you said that's like the perfect like precursor to what the album is about it's like mm. we all have it we all have it we all we all see the 10 percent that we could have added on top yeah more easily than we see the 90 percent that we did achieve mm. um, and and um for artists for creatives and a lot of a lot of what i i i will answer through will be through the prism of a creative right so here I am, I'm like, I mean, I, it's amazing to hear all these amazing things said about me, but I'm a kid from Jos. Mm. My father was born in a village. My mother was born in a village. I am the first person from my people to go to school in the US. And so <clears throat> it is not a path that there's a lot of experience. There's, we're, we're trailblazing as a family as we go yeah. along. And to do so, I create this larger than life guy, Am I Abaga, Mr. Incredible. You know, it's not you, it's, but he accomplishes all these feats. And I find myself around my 40th birthday because the world has changed. All, everything I did, you did, but the world has changed. Now it's now it's essence and whiskey and and, and hey, if you want to keep going, you have to start again. And what yeah. are you gonna do then? You know, and that's when we need to return to the person inside. That's mm -hmm. when you need to remember who you are and say to yourself, it doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter how this is going to be received. This is my truth, my desire, my goal, and I'm going to attempt. And I, and I have so much empathy in this, in this phase of my career. Uh, a lot of the work we'll talk about, I want to do a task, is to ensure that creators have the tools they need earlier on because... A lot of people are not prepared when the when the world changes around you. Yeah. You build something that isn't really real, that people see you as, and it sort of cages you. You're afraid to start new things because if people respect you at a certain level, they don't want to see you fail. You know, at, at attempting new things like putting out an album this year is a risk. What if it didn't do well? Yeah. What would that say to everybody, every playlist or every streaming person? Hey, this guy's done for real. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's these things that we have to continuously navigate as we go through life. And hopefully, you know, at this phase of my career, I hope that I can be a vessel, vessel that reminds people that, hey, this guy that I grew up listening to is still out here trying, changing names, still, you know, setting up a tech platform, working for creatives, doing, you know, hey, why not? If I get to the point where I feel I'm stuck, I remember that MI did it. So, you know. No, that, that's fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Finish it. Finish the thought. No, no, I was done. I was done. Okay, and, and, yeah, I was listening to an interview we did uh, with uh, I think his name was Tayo Ayinola, and and there was a line you said in there that it said, you said don't waste time having a low opinion of yourself, Bro. right? There, there, there's enough people out there doing that for you already. You don't waste time doing that to yourself. Maybe wanted to opine on that a bit more. 
bro. I, I, <clears throat> because entertainment is a perception game, right? Entertainment. Now, the creation of art and what it means to the artist is, is, is different. It's removed mm -hmm. from the entertainment aspect of it. But the entertainment game is a perception game. It's people's opinions about something that you've created that can be commoditized and monetized, yeah. right? And it is such a slippery slope for a human being to have to, in any way, eat off of the end, of whatever, of the end of some sort of process that relies on people's opinions. And in some way we all are, right? Your boss has to think you're doing a good job. You know, you're, you're um, but I think in the arts is, so much more amplified for people who ne I never signed up to be a celebrity. Yeah. I'm an artist. I I didn't know. I, I'm not prepared for fame. I'm not prepared for like for like brand. Like what's your brand? I'm not. I'm an artist. I write poems and I, I make music and and um, if if as you go through it, you have unchecked trauma or you have you know self doubt or whatever, it can it can bury you. Yeah. And so I've really started telling people around me that whatever the highest picture of yourself you see, that's what you, that's what you should believe you are all the time. Because why not? Like, why not? It, it may not be true, but why not? Isn't that a better story for you to be telling yourself? You don't know me. Well, I'm still here. But just watch and see. It's a better story. It's a better screensaver for you to have you know, yeah. in your mind. Yeah. You know. No, I love, I love it. And that's a new hashtag. But why not? <laughs> <laughs> So that's that's it for my, for for African folks and everybody online. But why can't you become Sundar, right? The CEO of Google. But but why not? You know, and, and I think that's that's a refreshing uh, take yeah, and, and look look at it. Um, so I, I want to get to the album, um, the guy, uh, released on the nineteenth, I believe it was last uh, Friday. Yeah, um, yeah, and love it, love it, love it, love Thank it. You, um, I, I wanted to get your take on on how the reception of the album has been has it surprised you again you, you talked about the creation from the start where you had the self-doubt do you still have anything left in the tank to putting it out to the collabos that just i mean I, bado bado is is <laughs> is the baddest and and then nas too to have nas and and uh, I mean, you gotta, you, Mr. Love Song Crooner, you had to do your one yeah. and, uh, and then, uh, so, some of the newer newer folks that, that you had on there. Um, I just wanted to get your your mindset on how the album release has gone, what has exceeded your expectation, um, and and what your favorite uh, songs on there are, and and if there are any anecdotal stories on how some of those uh, uh, collaborations came about. Um, yeah, just just hand it over to you to to sell us sell us on the album yeah. again. Uh -huh. Well, first of all, Googlers, this album is amazing. Everyone should be listening to it. It will increase your productivity. Where's that? Yeah, where's the chart? I just <laughs> everyone that has listened to this album at Google, their productivity has gone up by. I'm probably gonna say something that you guys don't even use as lingo at the company. I should have done research on it. I should have done some research to know how you guys. How do Google talk? Google speak. <laughs> but the album is really is is uh, blind people are seeing people are uh, <laughs> no, but it's a good it's no, a good project. Yeah, that's in productivity. That, that's a metric. <laughs> yeah. Google and productivity. So you're, you're, you're on the right track. <laughs> yeah, I, I could maybe do a play on like, you know, if you listen to my album at Google, you get the drive, and mm. whatever sheets you're working on, um, <laughs> will have you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm not your freestyle. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, so you can meet up with people, you know. Ooh, okay. You using all the, you, know, you see what I'm doing? Okay, I see. You know what I mean? Because as a G and a male, Ooh. you know, you have to. Go, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, but um, yeah, my album is out. It's an amazing body of work. Um, I think what what has really surprised me is leading up into it. I got told constantly, hey, there's a Gen Z wall. No one knows you. This is, and what I've discovered is that generation, they really care about the quality of product. They really care. And if like for older artists, I'll say to them, like, just make great music. Like they'll find it and they'll they'll share it. Um, I don't, I think when I was 
discovering music early on, like things like age and stuff really meant, meant so much to me as opposed to like right now you just need to create great product and they'll, they'll share it. So that's been really surprising. Um, also, um, I don't know, man, I, I, I wish for the best. I believe the highest, the highest, <laughs> set the highest objectives for the project, but to actually see it happen is still, you know, that feeling, I haven't had that feeling in a while. I haven't put out an album, you know, in this way in a long time. And so I remember, I just remember being 25 again and being, you know, 26. Um, and that's been really good. And it's just seeing people share music and how they like, there was a, a soldier, I, I think he must have been in the US Army that was talking about a song, song with Benson and shared it on TikTok. And having people talk about, it. I have another record that's about uh, mental health called Soldier. And, uh, and the place for like, men and vulnerability like it's a conversation about that and uh, and accountability as well men accountability vulnerability mental health that's what the song is about and seeing like people have open conversations about that that's been really touching and really beautiful you know and and, and since you brought it up i guess we'll, we'll just we'll just we'll dip our feet in that pond real quick um that 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 was a massive song uh, a soldier and and i think again you look at the hip hop game. You're supposed to be tough and rough, and with your Afro puffs, and 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 that, <laughs> that's where you're supposed to be. Yeah. But to come out of it, and and you tell a story about, you know, they say boys don't cry, but no, you you should don't tell us why exactly. And 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 you got to get it out of your system. And you take all the way from you being a better person to, okay, you're improving yourself. But that doesn't take away from the accountability. And I love the way it laid out because it almost started yeah. by improve yourself. But then also look at what yeah. you've done and the damage you've done. It's like the wars yeah. that have started. 95% is us. You know, it's the men. 95% it's of crimes with loss of life are about us. It's we're the killers. Us. We're the cults, the gangs, the cops, the serial murders. We're the ones at night making the world unsafe when what we need is our sons for light. Yes. I'm penning this, hoping that when we reminisce, we can start from the genesis. Every man should be feminist. This is my perspective. And the reason why I say that is because when I started to be aware of my place as a man in society, this is, and I had a brilliant, brilliant young lady in my team. She was leading up our digital marketing. We had a podcast and she just started saying these very weird words, gender, privilege. I was like, and you have to understand, I'm a CEO of a record label at the time. I'm the number one rapper in the country. I am in sitting in the middle of like, I am privileged personified power yeah. in Nigeria. Yeah. First born son. And I started to listen and then I started to ask questions. And I said, I asked 10 female friends and six of them had been raped. Um, wow. And it just, I was like, and so the way I try to explain to, to people around me, I was like, at the moment when those friends of mine were about to be raped, did they have, did they have a right to say no? Mm -hmm. Because if you would say that the answer is yes, they had a right to say no, you're a feminist. That's, that's what it is. That's what it is. It's, it's, it, you are thinking about the fact that she has a right to be a human being in that moment. You know, and I, I, I'm simplifying, but in the conversations that I have, this is the moment when people go, I'm like, ask your sister, ask your niece, ask your aunt, ask them about their lives, ask them what they've been through, and then reflect on it and say, is this the way society should be? And if you're not, then you're with me. If you're not happy with the way society is, you're with me. Yeah. And forget what other people call it. The mission is every human being has as much a right to decide what happens to them as you do. Simply. You know, no, and uh, I get I get killed for it, bro. I get killed for it because you know, uh, social media just brings out the worst in these conversations. But it is the way I, I'll describe it is that it's my truth. It's I cannot talk about this any any other way now. Mm -hmm. And I think when people talk about that song Soldier, sorry, I'm like going off on a bit of a rant about this. No, no. This is but when people talk about that song, Soldier, they always comment about how there's so much nuance in the song. Because I start out saying, men don't cry, they don't tell us why. So when yeah. tears start to fill up my eyes, I want to hide. We talk about it like it's a badge of honor or pride, but guess who are the leading victims of suicide? It's young men. Don't have a way to emote. Could be dealing with stress. His heart could be broken. 
All this hardening starts partly with father. We're now our fathers. We carve in the mint to hard men just starving for hope. And now the world is changing rapidly. Happily, I accept it. But learning how to be a good man is proof and invasive. See, toxic masculinity in it, we all will suffer. But all I know is be tougher to feed and protect my lovers. It's what I was taught that I must be. Honestly, I want to be better, but promise me that if you show me how, you won't punish or tarnish me. Because another thing is that how the conversation is being had, and it's not an excuse, but it's, it's, it's permitting people to say, if this is how we're going to have the conversation, there's no need to change. You know? But after we have this moment where it's like, let's acknowledge the fact that we're not allowed to be vulnerable, then the second verse, as you said, yeah. you know, um, ask six of my female friends to share, 10 of my female friends to share their lens, tell me what it's like to be them, to get a sense. Six of them had been raped, all 10 had been assaulted. I halted, man. I couldn't believe how we have faulted 95% of crimes with loss of life about us. Yeah. We're the killers, we're the cults, the gangs, the cops, the serial murders. We're the ones at night making the world unsafe for what we need is the sun for light. Um, this is a song that I, you know, I know that other songs are, are starting to do well, but this is a song that if I could perform, if I had one opportunity to perform a song anywhere, it's because I have a niece. I hope I have a daughter one day. I have, you know, I I want I would love I would I wish that the world for Nigerian for every Nigerian person, but for Nigerian women, the women around me, that it could be significantly better. Because when I listen to them, I am I am like, you know. Okay. Done. No, no, I, I dude, I, I love it. We could we could go all day on it. And and so all our all our ladies out there, you know, God God bless. And I, absolutely I, I I love it because um, even in your, uh, I think it was a TEDx you did about four years ago. I was watching it. it you said it there too, like, I'm a feminist, you know, and, and it was interesting to, to hear that because you hear different variations of it, especially in uh, contemporary times now. And, and for you to simplify it in your, in, 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 in just the way MI can, where it's as simple as, do you believe a woman has a right to make her own decision or own choices? And if the answer is yes, you're a feminist, you know, because like, you see them as a human being, you see them as an equal. And that's, that's just, that's marvelous in itself. Because of the implication of what it means. Yeah. Right. The implication, I, we, we think about like the, the, like the, like the, like sticker on top of the topic, but the implication is as a human being, if someone mm -hmm. wants to do something to me, make a decision for me, what rights do I have? And mm -hmm. what difference should there be because someone else has different, you know, different biology under their clothes, you know, and and it's something that I think at that level, people, you know, just ponder that and think about that, and then whatever that ends up being in society, you know, is is as an expression of the the, the core, which is every human being should have as much a right to make decisions on their life as the next human does. And no, when I, we get there, the world will be a better place. No, I, I love it. And, and, and they're already comments strewn in. People are appreciating you on, on, on talking about mental oh, health and, and, yeah. and, and, and looking out for the ladies overall. And, and <laughs> since we're on there, I mean, I, I want to stay on I'm the looking out for, This is me even looking out for the men. It's like the last, line on the, the last line on the song is like, I see you cover your tears, but what are you going to do about those scars? One One hundred percent. And those are the scars I wanted to talk about because... Yeah. I watched your 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 marathon interview with uh, Steve uh, Bosa. I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, I think it was like yeah. nine hundred hours. Um, <laughs> five hours. I was. I know. It was that free day yesterday, and we just went. And it was five a.m. for him. He went to like nine a.m. Well, you kept me up till three a.m. watching that joint. But one of the big things I wanted to bring up that that you spoke about there was 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 mental health and 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 really to be more specific, therapy, and and the importance of it. And I, I kind of wanted to get your take on it because there are a lot of people here coming out of the pandemic um, uh, who, who dealt with all kinds of massive things, um, uh, being locked up in, in, in a place for long, not knowing what the future held. And then even working at a company on like Google, that, that the pressures you deal with every single day to perform, to deliver. Um, you all know what I'm talking about over at Google here. We're about to go into Perf. Um, again, now every twice every year, they're assessing the work you've done for the last six months. If it's up to par, what you've done, and 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 there are all these pressures. And I just wanted to get your take on on, on therapy because you brought up something interesting 
when you described it, that it's it's really just an outlet for you to kind of tell your story. But it's something that is really stigmatized and and not, not as much here in the U.S., but from an African perspective, therapy is hugely stigmatized. So kind of just wanted to get your take and your advice to folks on, on pursuing that path as an outlet to, to better mental health. Yeah. So, <clears throat> sorry. Um, <clears throat> When I, when I talk about therapy, I guess maybe the first place I should start from is something has happened to every one of us. Mm. Nobody, nobody on earth knows the total version of your side of the story. And I tell my friends that therapy is paying someone that has the skills to know what to do as they listen to you, because most people interrupt you. Most people will get triggered because they'll think, you know, why is he telling the story? They'll get distracted. So that you can say what happened to you because you deserve for it to be said. Mm. You know, um, I'm discovering the biological levers behind, as I read more, the biological levers behind what communicating and expressing ourselves means from an evolutionary standpoint. But, um, especially for Africans, most of us would have been, if your parents were born were born on the continent, you would have had uh, colonialism, apartheid, some sort of, some something there in your history, yeah. something there in your parents. And you would have borne the, whatever, the trauma that was created at that point, you would have borne some level of it. If your parents were in the States or the UK or whatever, you would have had the trauma of picking up, leaving a whole family, settling in a new place, dealing with racism, dealing with, you know, it's there. It's there. Mm -hmm. And it shapes how you see the world, how you react to people. It shapes your inter in interactions. And until you're able to say, the reason I react this way in this moment is because I taught myself to react this way whenever I'm faced with this situation. And maybe now I can assess if that's the way I have to do it because I probably, I probably made that decision when I was a helpless child. Mm -hmm. But now as an adult, maybe acting that way is now creating different outcomes for me. And to sit with someone and just explain yourself, explain what happened to you. Was sexual assault, violence, you know, I didn't have any of those, but I grew up in, um, Luckily, but I grew up in a family where my dad is a pastor and we just didn't have, we just didn't have the resources to survive comfortably. Mm -hmm. So my, my, my interactions with money, my interactions with being comfortable, like through suffering and like a lot of those things are ingrained in me. And now as an adult, as I have to like, you know, I'm getting married soon, I'm assessing, you know, where I am in my career and life, you know. I have to be able to sit with someone and say, this is what happened to me when I was a child. I, we would go to school and they would say, the students that haven't paid school fees come out to the front. <laughs> they would, and they, we would come out and they would, they would whip us. And some of the years they would send you home. And I have that. And I, I've processed that. And now when I don't have, what do I do? Do I go sit at the back of the class? I'm still, mm -hmm. it's still happening. And unless I go back and I'm like, man, that made me feel so embarrassed. I felt so ashamed. I remember one time and get it out and feel it. Mm -hmm. And then I can be like, okay, now what I can do is to do something differently. I'm going to make sure I save up rather than just process what happens when I get whipped. I am going to make a different decision as an adult for the child, for the, for the young Jew that's still in that class that doesn't want to get to come to the front of the class. So that is, that's what therapy is, is for me. And I, I think it's like, it's insane that it's stigmatized. Like it's insane because your brain, I believe, is way more important to you than the, like your liver, your kidney, or your heart, or like you know what I mean. Like it's insane. Like it's like going to go do like going to the gym, and people are like, well, "What are you going to the gym for, bro? You, you mean you need a gym to like to like have muscles? You need a gym to be fit? Oh, you're a weak guy. It's it's that insane. Mm -hmm. Like that's the place you go to yeah. to get fit. The place you go to." To, to take off the pressure, to like explain yourself, to share your perspective on what happened is, th is therapy. And it should be, it should be common and normal. It should be, you know, it should be like church or like going to the basketball game or, you know, we all should do it all the time. 
No, thank you for that. And you all heard it. If Mr. Incredible is telling you that going to therapy is okay, don't, <laughs> don't let anyone stigmatize it for you. <laughs> uh, but that's some heavy Shout out stuff. to the comments, man, by the way. I saw the lamp on uh, uh, was sat there. I, I know who that is. I know a Googler <laughs> apart from you, Paul. See? <laughs> See? Well, they're, well, they're levels. I, I, was, I, was, I was the first to do it. So that's that's the that's really <laughs> way to do that. No, but, but going back to the album, uh, I, I was talking about the collabos and, and, and all you had on there. I guess from, from, my, from my take, what, what, what was the favorite collaboration you had on the album? And, and don't worry, we'll hide it so none of them hear this. Um, but I'd love to get your take on it. Um, just yeah. either for the importance of it or the sound it brought to the music. I mean, I, I look at there's an easy one with, with, with Nas and it's always something in my head where I just thought, dude, the two of them just on a track together because the philosophical way, and I will get into that too, the way you, you're such a student of history and, and the way you kind of rap, and I see Nas do that too. So that was just incredible for me to get together. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then, and, and OG, like one day Cole, who could have been going through what you were going through too, that our time has passed. But then he does that fire track with Fireboy. It does this with you. And it's like, nah, he ain't done yet. He still got stuff no. in him. And then Bro, if you hear one this new music, brother and Ice Prince too, coming back yeah. on a track again <laughs> after all that noise that happened. Like there's just so many. And I want to get your, your take. I think you were about to say something about Wanda Cole first, but you can get through that and, and tell me what yeah. your favorite was. I was just jumping in to say uh that yeah, one day, man, his new music. If you're a one day Cole fan, you're about to eat good. Yeah. <laughs> you are about to eat. Go and empty your fridge and your freezer and your pantry. And your, you are about to eat. Good, yo. One day is coming for everybody. Uh, my favorite. Um, the reason I'm I'm struggling to answer it because everything, um, everything was just so magical, um, and they happened. Like I give an example. Like the song with Fino and Caveman just fell in my lap, but had so much history and context to it because. I had introduced Mastercraft to Banky W, okay. and that was like a, a, a huge step for Mastercraft. And then we never worked all this time. Wow! And we tried to work, and it almost at some point I was like even upset with him. I was like, "Bro, I'm trying to work with you," and he was just busy at the time. You know, was Wiz and all these guys were blowing up. And here, when I need it, a Mastercraft track falls in my lap hmm. because Fino had asked me to to had also early. In, my, earlier in my career had asked me for an opportunity to perform with me on a stage that ended up being like a thing that blew him up. And so when he knew I was recording, he was like, bro, I, I got you. Just take a record, listen to these records and take anyone. And when I heard that song, I was like, can I have this one? It was done. I just had to rap on the end, right? So it was just a magical process. I'll say that there is one that still is, this is just step one. And when I was asking myself, why what are you coming back to make music for? The answer I gave myself was, <clears throat> it would be awesome for fans of MI who have always said, when they talk to their fans, like when they talk to fans of other artists, yo, this, this guy in Nigeria, because I regard myself as one of the greatest rappers of all time, I want to give myself the best chance to be heard at a global level. Mm. So I'm gonna show up. At 40, I'm gonna show up again because there's a new opportunity now. Streaming is making the world easier. Yeah. And the Nas collaboration, as historic as it is, is still a step for me to do what I, I would prefer to be in the studio with these artists and mm -hmm. actually collaborate. Because in some way, that's the history of what all young Africans, our whole generation of people are doing. There was a narrative about us when we were kids, about who Africans are and what our place in the world was. And over the last 40 years of my life, I've seen us do it. The NBA MVP, Yanis Atetokounmpo. Look, let's look at the path through Greece. Yeah. Look at like, look at at Hollywood. Look at like, just look at Africans from about like, look at us. Yeah. I wanna, I wanna as well do the thing because this is the era of the Africans that were like, that's not who we are. You guys have the story wrong. Let's show you. And it's all of us. It's all of us at Google. It's all of us at the best companies, at the top of the game, wherever we are. We're, we're, everyone we interact with, everyone you sit next to, 
has the opportunity. And whether they say it or not, they probably had a different idea of what an African was when they were born as well. And they have an opportunity to meet a real African, to see how smart we are, how brilliant we are, how great our food is, how much we love life, how caring we are, you know. And, and it would be awesome if you could also be like, I know you guys think you guys have heard all the best rappers, but there was a guy and he has a new album and this is it. And it's, it's better than anything else that the world is going to hear this year, you know. No, I, I love it, and, and the global appeal is 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 mad. I, I think it was ten years ago, my wife and I went on our honeymoon to Tahiti, and we get picked up from the from the airport, and we're going to the resort. And I think it was um, um, uh, my wife did the you know African queen just there playing. I'm like, what? Like this is the other side of the world. And ever since then, like we're big travelers. But we go to places now and we'll be in a restaurant in, in, in Belgium. And I'm like, why the heck is Nigerian music playing here? You know, and it's just become so much of, of, of sort of mainstream across across the world. And it, it feels like we're just infiltrated. It, it's not it, it's it's not a oh, pick this genre anymore. It's become part of the culture and popular music in so many of these countries. And I, I guess from, from your perspective, what's sort of driving that? What what is what has yeah. made us? blow up i mean think about even think about the framing of that right because we grew up listening to american music so it's even crazy like to be yeah. in like a country and be like what is african music doing here yeah that 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 shows you what the mindset was that's true right it shows you where we sort of thought our place was yeah it's like if you're in an african party in lagos then that you hear some african music but you're gonna hear like uh like Generally, at the time, it was like whatever Biggie or Pop yeah. or yeah. you know what I mean. Like that's music. Yeah. We are artists. No, mm -hmm. we have always been. Yeah. We have always been as 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 amazing. Always, always. And now, technology, a new generation of humanity that is saying we do not want to live with some of the frameworks of the past. We want to be different. We don't want skin color to mean anything. We don't want gender to mean anything. We don't want, like, we want to be accepted as a person, you know, and this is an amazing opportunity for the world to discover something that has always been amazing, always our culture. And, you know, when they come to, when you come to Owambe and you come to a party and you're, you're, then you get it. Like, people are like, oh, man, this is actually amazing. You go to an African wedding, you get it. It's beautiful. It's We have, yeah. we have an amazing story as well. Um, I think that, Part of your question was about who's driving it. I think that I would be, I would be making a big mistake if I didn't say that this is a movement that was completely spearheaded. It no funder can take credits, no platform. It was completely by the fans. Mm. Because and I saw it. I saw it happen. Young people said, "I will buy a hundred copies of Mi's album and I will spread it to my friends." Wow. Me and my friends are going to invite M.I. and Wanico to our college and we're going to put together the $3,000 that we need to do it. And we're going to rent a hall. And we're and this is how the music spread. This mm -hmm. is how the music spread. And uh, with the work I do now, um, I, I, I have a, a it's, a, it's a company, it's a, it's a platform. We started doing more like service. Um, we had more like a service agency for creatives to help them connect them to opportunities. But the reason is because when I look at the industry today, I see that they're, what, what people are benefiting are the survivors, like the people that made it against the odds. What if the infrastructure was in place for you guys to meet the people that, that died in a car accident before you could hear them because the roads were bad or because they weren't studios, you know, they just gave up or if they didn't have the funding. You know, I grew up and lived and I've worked with all of them. And there are millions of them in Nigeria, in, in Africa. And I want to dedicate this moment and the rest of my life to just working with everyone. You know, I'm an artist. Again, I'm an artist. What I know how to do is just find talent, develop yeah. talent, make art. But I want to spend as much of my time as well as, you know, being a platform, being involved in that work to make sure that the next MI doesn't have to go through what I went through. Because I'm a survivor, man. I barely made it i barely made it <laughs> you know what i mean and one more thing to add is that um even though i sort of segued from your question into where i am now but that's fine is that i'm also discovering that 
the impact of like neurodiversity on um, like sort of like the marriage between neurodiversity and creativity and seeing how, like if you Google ADHD, the first thing you'll see, or one of the first things you'll see is like, people with ADHD will live a difficult life. And I remember the day I saw that, how it hit me. And it just made me go like, I felt seen, I felt because I've struggled through school, I've struggled to be understood, I've struggled to like, like even just to raise funding for a platform, like even after all I've done, I've, I, I didn't go the route that allows me to speak the language. So I have to learn new things constantly to continue to be relevant in an industry that isn't built for purpose for me. You know, so um, I say that to say that this moment that we're in where we can celebrate Afro, Afrobeat spreading, we should still remember that it could be optimized even better. There could be better music, better movies, better. And th what that would do is it would change the lives of millions. It would change economies. It would like, oh my God. So this is this is what I want to spend the rest of my life doing. You know? No, that, that's magnificent. And I want to get into the, 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 the task um, project in, in, in general. Uh, but, but just before we jump there, two things. One, folks, please throw your questions in there for MI. In a couple of minutes, I'll, I'll start asking them those questions. So, uh, Dolapo for the win. Halima, I want to hear yeah. <laughs> Y'all hit me up with questions for MI so we can we can put them in a couple Shout out of to all the Nigerians. Shout out to everyone on the... Oh, man, there's more than Nigerians here. I can see. Yeah, I, see I saw Halima. I was like, shout out to the Nigerians. I can see <laughs> non-Nigerian names as well. Shout yes, out let, let's, let's, force, let's force them to, to, force them to answer some, uh, some, some funny questions. But... Um, but ju just from the, 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 the landscape, the, the artist landscape right now, what young artist in, 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 in Nigeria currently uh, gets you excited? You know, with the, with the, not just the music, just the work ethic. And, and there's always, there's something you say in, in a lot of your interviews, it's, it's do it right. You know, just, just do things right. It's the hard way to do it, but do things right. I, and, and I want to hear from you, what artists right now are you excited about? Because one, they're doing it right. And the other part, they're, 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 they're getting the shine because I'm all about giving people their flowers while, while they're still around yeah. now. So just wanted to get your, your take on that. Yeah, can I pick two? Can I pick yeah, two? that's fine. I think one is obvious right now. Um, uh, I'm going to pick Ashake. Um, Ashake, he's, he's a, he's a, he's, he has the number one record in the country right now. And he took it from himself. Mm -hmm. um, he's, but I signed a kid called Black Bones a while back, and Black Bones told me about Ashake. Ashake was already a star. This is like maybe seven, eight years ago. Star in their school, he was the biggest artist. And then he watched all the guys that he came up with get signed and blow up Black Bones, Fireboy, Ba Ba Bam, all of these guys, and just waiting for his moment. And then this year, you know, Alamide calls him. And, and the reason why I pick him is because. He is the perfect intersection between that raw, like what what they, what sometimes we say street in Nigeria, mm -hmm. but that raw gritty like like sound and the the most like the highest level of like harmonies of understanding of like harmony and how to like deliver on a track and how a hook should ride and like I listen to his music sometimes and I'm like this guy is too good. Like his last record is called Terminator. He he literally is the Terminator yeah. of <laughs> all, like this guy is the Terminator of of uh, of Nigerian music. Um, I'm also going to pick uh, uh, because one of the things that's very clear is that it's so hard for young women in our industry, and so by the time they get, by the time people are ready to come out, it, it, the numbers are always like ninety five to five percent women. So I want to shine a light on Tomi Owo, who's on the record Soldier. Okay. Um, she is known in our industry as one of the best writers, one of the best voices. She's amazing. She's not maybe ever going to be your social media champion, your social, you know, she's never going to be like the most maybe influential, um, but she is art at its, at its best. You know, she's excellent and she deserves to be heard and deserves to be, you know, like she just deserves everything. So shout out to Tommy Owo. And, and I, I, I believe she's, she's on the, she's on the track too. Um, yeah. 
Oh, what was that track? What's the song she's on again? The Soldier. She's on Soldier. She's on Soldier, yes. Yeah. yeah, she's on Soldier. Yes, she yeah. sets up Soldier. Yes. Yes, that's, oh that's what she's on. That's okay. awesome. All right, real quick, because I know I have to get to questions, but just give us your 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 elevator pitch on task and, and what it what it what it is, what it does, and, and really how we can help support it. Um your, your, your company here. I'm talking to Googlers. <laughs> For, I mean, how you could help is coming to co-found co and uh, no, I'm, <laughs> um, but um, what I'm trying to do, my big assumption, let me start from there, is that the industry today wasn't created by creatives. And so it does capture some value, but it does so in a very like, in, in a relationship with creatives that it has, has so much friction that eventually means that most a lot of value is lost. And that if creatives were working with the right people, were able to rethink from a foundation level up what optimized transactions would be, how people could approach the industry, you know, as young creatives. Um, and so this is my big assumption that we could do a better job of, at thinking about how creatives interact with, with funding, with opportunities, and with access to, to uh, capturing value. What we're doing today is trying to create a, a, a platform that will farm opportunities at scale for young creatives and probably through some sort of tech, um, some sort of um, app or um, tech platform, be able to just, they'll be able to submit their profile and be able to be matched to opportunities that will progress them down their career, you know, as they go along. We, what happens today is that people will hire a manager and the ma they and the manager will sort of like, be like, what should we do next? Let's, you know, and I think that that can be improved on. Like whatever those, whatever that list of things that they're going to lay out to move them from point A to point B, I believe tech could do it smarter and could do it uh, quicker. But I say that saying that, you know, um, this is early stages where we're working through validating our initial like um, approach. And right now what we do is uh, we do a lot of work with social impact funders because the country is in a very interesting space. We farm for grants at scale and then we just enlist young creatives because they are the culture leaders in their communities. So yeah. if you want to have a conversation around uh, elections, it's not just the big stars, but it's the star in Joss, wherever he is, yeah. who's looking for opportunities so I can take this grant, I can break it down into smaller pieces, I can get that guy to get some training to understand how to pass this message and do that work. And so we're doing that. We're, we're amazingly blessed to be working with like organizations from OSF to Luminet to uh, Bill and Melinda Gates. Um, we're, we're in there, UNDP, we're in there. And <laughs> we're trying to, right now, the big project we're working on is to make sure that young creators can lead the charge to get um, to get young people to come out and vote next year. Because when the algorithms start to see young people as socially conscious as well as being entertained, I think that that will allow for more of those conversations to be part of society, which is a necessary part of our development, you know, our, our development as a country. We need to start thinking together about how the country gets better, you know, and not just dancing the music or whatever. And I think creatives can lead that conversation. No, 100. And thank you for that. So uh, I'll surmise it by saying, you know, creating a playbook for creatives to get from, you know, what they see that what they are now to where they see themselves being and not just from an entertainment perspective, but also uh, from a social impact piece. All right. Before I start getting murdered by my coworkers here, let me get to questions real quick. Uh, Mr. Kenny Olowo, you uh, it says spot on about a generation being lost with the evolution of streaming and new music. How are you looking to tap into this evolution and globalization of Nigerian music whilst, while still retaining originality? Shout out to you, Kenny. I, I, I think I saw that you went to the same. Oh, no, no, it's not Kenny. It's Kunle that went to the same school as me. Um, yeah, um, it's a, it's a, because everything is changing so quickly as well. Um, I think that the right prism to have is that now the world is going to realize that oh, African art is super dope and that's going to create pipelines for everyone in every genre. Um, I want to, as an artist, I, you know, I want to I spread my art as much as I can first, but I also want to, through task and through the work I'm doing, create pipelines that allow 
allow us to do this better at scale for more creatives. Because again, as I said, I know creatives in Joss today, in Enugu today, in Calabar today, that are looking for an opportunity. And they don't need to be the biggest star. They just need to have a career. They just need to write a song for a TV show in Thailand, you know? And how do they find that opportunity? How do they, you know, you know, it's what, and the Andelas and different organizations have done, allow people to work from wherever they are, contribute to, you know, this growing thing. Um, and so maybe that's the way I'd answer that, answer that question. I hope I, I hope I interpreted it how you meant it, you know, when you, um, no, and, no, no, finish, finish your thought. Yeah, I think I, he's, I also said something about uh, originality. It's a big thing, uh, which is why I think we need our best artists, you know, we need our best creatives, our most thoughtful, our most intentional creatives at the forefront. Because if we are not careful, it's happened before where, you know, the uh, globalization of something will will ruin it as, it's, as it starts to spread too rapidly. Mm. So I'm happy to see people that are, you know, authentic and are, are clear about, you know, what Afrobeat should be. You know, um, I, I'm really proud of the guys that are at the forefront right now because they are truly authentic artists you know african artists yeah. no I, I love that and with the authenticity I, I'll, I'll go to halima's question because i think it ties into that really quickly you know it, it says your music always reflects how much deep work and introspection you've done which is not common in nigerian music so talking about your originality and and the question there is have you always been that way or there was a turning point for you i think of like crown of clay where you're talking all the way back to Mongo Park and you know, <laughs> the feature and 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 all your songs like you're always digging into history and all this thing. So is that is that always been sort of your mo or, or um, that that there was a point where where you just thought I need to go deeper? Yeah, my first project I ever recorded, which is be the last thing. Hopefully, people hear from me. It's an album called One. It's ten songs. The first song is called Ten. The songs are ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And the verse goes, I wrote some of my best lines sitting on porcelain, a trudging down dusty streets underneath scorching suns and streets greedy where we step in with caution. And people ask me, did you do it all for the fortune? A portion of paparazzi media distortion to get a Beverly house in the hills. And you can kill life for creative distortion and you can't hear me. There's too much distortion. I'm nauseous of people trying to. And the point is that even back then I was making the case that this isn't about this isn't about, for me, it isn't about, um, this is the first song you would have heard if I put that album out then. The first time you'd have ever heard Am I was me saying, I sit on my toilet. I wrote some of my best lines sitting on porcelain, mm -hmm. you know, sit and think about these lyrics, you know, because I want my art to, to, to make a dent and to make a change. And then the first song that people heard was Crowd Mentality. If you don't have a mind of your own, don't be disappointed. This is fine. Be a clone. It was a sarcastic song on so I, I would like to think that this is where I've been. However, you to be a true person of introspection is to realize that you did not know anything. <laughs> you did not know anything, even when you thought you were so deep in the past. You know? yeah. So it's it's the goal to be what you've described. It's it's the goal for me. And I I, I hope I'm doing a good job of attempting it every day. Uh, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, I, I'll go to the, as a fellow PK, um, you say your parents are pastors. Were they supportive about your career choice? Um, they were. They were. They always have been. My parents, they were supportive even in, even in the ways that, even when they didn't know they were being supportive. When I grew up, I, my dad cannot sing, but he was always singing. I'm always talking mm -hmm. about music. <laughs> my mom has the most beautiful voice. The most beautiful voice. And I produced, one of the first albums I ever produced was her, an album for her. Um, it's not. It's nowhere online, but uh, and um, that they they allowed me to do it when I was 11, 12. I needed to go out for, for for performances. They would say, "Hey, they've supported me." You know, when my first album came out, my dad started calling me MI as well. You know, <laughs> um, uh, so they've been nothing but supportive my whole career. Yeah, I'm very grateful for that. No, that's that's of cool. course some of the lyrics and. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was just gonna say some of them they can't play in church. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, they're, they're supportive but not fans. Maybe that's the way they say. <laughs> well, supportive it's been, well fans. They, they they've converted every 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 Afrobeat song into a church song now. What was it? The one I heard the other day. 
I think it was Fire Boy song, the one you won't want me, one you won't want me. Uh, yeah. I'm in my father's house, Janet. I'm like, how do you sing that? Like, how do you flip yeah. that? To, like, I'm like, look, we need to stop with all this nonsense, but yeah. <laughs> it's just funny. Um, real quick, let me sneak in uh, Shadi's question, and then I, I want to touch on one personal thing before we get out. Hey, am I in a country like Nigeria that struggles with gender inequality across the board, including the music industry? What steps are you taking to bridge the gap for women in this space? This is so such a good question because immediately when people say it, like the obvious thing is to look at like the women that are are famous or like the performers, but it's more than that. It's like the camera people, the people that are part of a like a camera team or the assistants. Like it's not the same for them going home at 10 p.m. as it is, you know, going home. And if entertainment, people are going home at 3 a.m. So yeah. what does that mean? Hey, okay, Kumle, Shagun, you guys can go. Uh, Bridget, you can't go, you know. Um, so what am I doing? Um, maybe first of all, I personally, I'm trying to listen more and learn because that will impact my company. It will impact my circle of influence, which will have a rippling effect. Um, at Task, uh, I've, we, are, we are like 75% uh, women-led team. So um, in fact, the whole team, I think there's a, at least 75% of our team is led by women. But even then, we, we still have to listen because, again, society, like even with one man in the room is still, you know. Um, and then we are starting to think about how do we get really young artists right before they start going to the studio. Because by the time I, I had traditionally intersected with them, they would already have some music. But because they're less safe in the studio than young men, the, the younger artists would be further along. So when I was younger, early as a CEO, I was just like, why are the female artists not as good as the male artists? Yeah. Like, well, I'd meet a young artist, I'd be like, this guy is just so much better. I was like, what's wrong with it? And our initial assumption in ignorance was that women aren't working as hard in the studio as guys. They just think that they're going to, this is ignorance. What we've come to find out is that, hey, there's no safe spaces for them to work. So it's something, that's the place we want to start. We're, we're doing a couple programs right now that when we, when we get the project, we'll say this is women only. We'll bring uh, female producers, female engineers. They'll have an ecosystem where they can learn and gain skills. And then hopefully down the road, maybe start investing in some studio spaces where the uh, overarching um, preference is for women to come. Because if they don't have the safe spaces when they're 17, 16, 15, 16, 17, if every time they go into the studio, the engineer is trying to be like, you know, uh, hey, you know, <laughs> it's, they're not, when they're 20, they're not going to be. That's good. Yeah. yeah the, you know, and then it's already too late. So, yeah. um, but it's something we just have to keep, keep working at, you know, um, and I don't, I, I don't think I have the answers. I think we're going to make an attempt, fail, assess, move forward, try. Um, but the goal is clear, um, a better, a more, an industry that has equal opportunities for everyone will be better for everyone economically, um, from it, just in every way, it'll be better for it for, for our country. So that's the goal. You know, thank you so much. And I know we have two minutes left. Um, so I want to be respectful of everyone's time. One, uh, it'd be absolutely responsible of me to get off this without congratulating you on your engagement and uh, pending nuptials. Uh, congratulations. Um, I, I know, Miss uh, Eniola, I, I guess I, this is a simple yes and no because I'm not going to give you a chance to run off the Sorry. time here. But um, as Miss Eniola made, am I the guy? Yes or no? <laughs> yeah, she did. She did. Good. <laughs> one, of the, one of the big things I'm finding out is that um, I was raised with the totally wrong approach. I don't think it's something my parents did intentionally because there wasn't a lot of like hierarchy in my family. But around me, I was raised with a totally wrong view of what, what partnership should be like when I got in a relationship and learning to like, what I've discovered is that the best way to say is I have another human being in my life who can give me the best perspective on who I am, what I'm doing and where I'm going. And that has just helped me like it's opened the world for me, you know, and um, I'm very grateful to her. Hopefully, oh, hopefully she doesn't hear, oh, there she is. I told you she's around, she's around here somewhere. <laughs> and I, I hope I hope I read the thing well, baby. Not <laughs> but I'm no. so lucky. I am completely lucky. 
what a, what a, what an amazing partner I have. Fantastic. Congratulations. Uh, I know we're at time. Um, Mr. Jude, am I the guy? Abaga, I want to say a huge, tremendous thank you for, for taking the time out to meet with us today. Uh, I think from the, from the chat and, and the feedback from folks, it, it's been absolutely amazing. And um, one, congratulations on the album. Um, definitely hope it continues to blaze, uh, continue to listen and share it out there. Congratulations on, on the engagement and, and pending marriage. Um, congratulations on task and the massive work it's going to do. And congratulations on, on making it to 40 because not everybody makes it up there. So congratulations. And yes, we'll, we'll yeah. definitely love thank to have you. you thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Number one album in Nigeria is doing well. You guys stream it. I know that you people in Google, you have one button somewhere that if you just like... Man, we like this Emma album. Let's press it. So, I mean, I could, I could really, I could go go. You know what I mean? So you guys do the thing, uh, do the right. thing. Press the thing. Press the button. You, you, you two right. folks, I hope you're hearing it. Push the button. All right, uh, Abby, <laughs> if you're out there, just push the button. Push the thing. Do the thing. Let's get it up. The SEOX. There's something. There's like. <laughs> but thank you, thank Bless you so it. much uh, for taking the time. Thank I you, really everyone. appreciate you. Have a yeah, great, too. great rest of the day, and uh, and God bless. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right.